thank you all for coming on. We'll start and hopefully we'll hear from Brian in a, in a moment. Uh, tonight's call, I think it's important given a number of you have still pressing legal issues. And what sparked this was I spoke with Amanda. Uh, Amanda is someone who is uh, very well educated, has been working in the area of, of naturopath uh, medicines, uh, has uh, medical discipline, fell foul of the medical establishment, and they created a court case against her. So I hope I haven't mis-summarised that, Amanda, but in, cons in conversing with Amanda, it became clear that we really need to go back over the notes we've got in terms of how to succeed at court and really to focus on what we know now and how we can handle ourselves considering many of you are facing real legal pressing issues and the fact that the bar guilds continue to press their trade. So I want to cover that. That's the, the most of the call I want to cover that and go through some important updates. I want to talk a bit too about some of the global issues that are happening at the moment. And in particular, I want to look at some of the concerns that a number of you may have or um, may come to have in coming weeks, particularly about this uh, comet, alleged comet uh, Elenin that's due to start to make its presence felt more and more in the coming months. And then I want to talk about the trust IDs of Eucadia and some important updates on those because I know there's been some discussion, some interest on that. So I want to talk about that as well. But let's start with legal matters. And I want to thank, by the way, I want to thank... Um, uh, Brian for getting it going um, so we are getting a recording by the way um, this is for Kendall we are getting a recording of it even though it may not be recorded through um, through TalkShoe we are getting a recording okay so I don't know if, why Brian can't get in as host but as long as you can hear me we can keep going okay one of the things in presenting the knowledge of the law to you, apart from helping you, and Eucadia is about an open source model to help everybody, is to restore the law. To restore the law to the way it was before the perversions of the Bar Guild came into play and before a kind of law that requires you to have a PhD in lying in order to be able to understand what the hell is going on. Now, as you will see in the conversation tonight, more and more, as we move forward, a knowledge of exactly what's going on has become clearer and clearer. But does this mean that the bar itself will change its spots? Well, for some, I believe it will, yes. I do believe that not every single lawyer and every single prosecutor and every single judge will choose to act as tyrants and as criminals now that they've found out. But sadly, I believe the, the majority will refuse. And in fact, what will happen is that as their tricks are exposed, we'll move further and further to outright corruption. Now, I want to make this clear because whenever people talk about Eucadia and ecclesiastical deeds and people talk about how do I help myself, if you are facing a court issue, then it is perfectly normal to expect that you are looking for some help to resolve the issue, particularly if you're facing your home being taken or prison time or someone in your family is facing prison. It is not just natural, but it is sensible to be looking for remedy. So remedy is the number one thing in your mind. What I am saying to you is, I can reveal and show and share and, and talk about what we have learned with law, but at the end of the day, as we've always said with the Bar Guild, our job here is not to repair the bar, the private bar, or repair the private bar's franchise. 
Our job here is to see that the bars are dismantled, that the courts return to the people, that the law is restored, and that they are run out of town. And in the months preceding to those events taking place, what you will see, loud and clear, for the first time in hundreds of years, there will be no doubt in people's minds then that they're dealing with organised crime. Why? Because at that point, these people will not be following any law. Now, the reason they've stayed in power for so long is that as much as we hate the way that they behave, they have behaved within certain parameters, within certain boundaries, and that there have been people to enforce and ensure that they stay within those boundaries. But once they breach those boundaries, once they absolutely become heretics to their own law, criminals to their own law, then there is no pretense anymore. Now, when faced with a tyrant, the argument that's given, and it's a fair argument, is why and how can these things make a difference? Well, they make a difference when you separate the tyrant from the law. When the tyrant can no longer hide behind the law, then their ability to stay in power is measured in days and weeks. The problem with the private bar is that it is a guild that has dedicated itself to usurping law and pretending to represent the law. And because they have had general functions and general roles and general rules that they've followed up until now, it has been very hard, albeit impossible, to explain to people that these people do not represent the true law. So it's very important what you're doing. It's very exciting the time we're in. But at the end of the day, our success is when these people are exposed as criminals, not necessarily that they will follow. Some will follow, and a number of you will find increasing success in having matters resolved. But at the same time, you will see more and more desperate acts by the bar. Now, let's look at some of the key knowledge that we now know about the tricks of the private bar and their association with the laws and the ecclesiastical laws of the Roman cult. Now, I'm going to refer to some updates that have been put up today on one-heaven.org under the section How to Succeed at Court. So I ask all of you who are on the, on the call to go to one-heaven.org and all those that will be listening to the call to log on and have a look at the box How to Succeed at Court. So go to the home page, click on that box, that brown box, and when it comes up, I ask you to go to the right-hand side and look at the word penance, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine down from the right-hand side. You'll see the word penance. Now, if you don't see that word, please refresh your browser as it, you might have cached an old page. Now, let us have a look at this page. By the way, uh, for those that are on the call, I want to talk for about an hour. We'll do the normal questions and A at the, at the end. And because we haven't got the audio going in terms of the hosting and taking live calls, I ask if you can type in, in capitals, question, and then your question. And please wait until then. Then I will pick the questions off the, off the uh, dialogue which I'm seeing as you talk. Okay. The Sacrament of Penance. We've said this, but I think it's important to say it again because there are people who are coming to this call for the first time. There are people who have only just arrived in the last couple of conversations and the people still trying to get their head around what is UK and what we're talking about. So let's be absolutely crystal clear here. Whether you realise it or not, whether a judge, prosecutor, attorney or any law official admits it or not, the central law that governs the administrative procedure of all all and every Western law court case is the sacrament of penance. Let me repeat that because this is fundamental. If you want to know the end of the rabbit hole, 
this is where we're starting. We're starting at the end of the rabbit hole and moving through. No matter what a judge, prosecutor, attorney or any law official says to you, lies to you, the foundation of all court cases that you are facing is the ecclesiastical sacrament of penance. Now you can find those basic laws under Book 4, Functions of the Church, Canons 834 to 848, Part 1, The Sacraments, Title 4, The Sacrament of Penance, as, as Roman Canon Law, the Roman Cult Canon Law. And if you click there on that page under Penance, under How to Succeed at Court, from one-heaven.org, you can go and actually see those canons yourself. Now, I think it's worth reading out what the Roman Catholic Church and defines the procedure of penance being. And I'm going to read this carefully because I think it will be revealing to those on the call. The Roman Catholic Church, the, the Roman cult defines penance as thus. It comprises the actions of the penitent, the accused, in presenting himself to the priest otherwise known as an ordinary, courts being known as the oratory and the judge being known as an ordinary. So presenting himself to the priest and accusing himself of his sins. In a moment we'll define what we mean by prosecutor and where this word comes from Latin. So accusing himself of his sins, part one. And the actions of the priest in pronouncing absolution and imposing satisfaction. The whole procedure is usually called, from one of its parts, confession. And it is said to take place in the tribunal of penance, tribunal, court, because it is a judicial process in which the penitent is at once the accuser, the person accused, and the witness. Interesting, the three parts there. While the priest pronounces judgment and sentence. Or I'll stop there because the rest becomes the propaganda. But, but this is important because here in the... Now, by the way, if anyone's asking what am I reading, I repeat where I am. I'm on one hyphen heaven dog. I've clicked on the brown box, How to Succeed at Court. I've then gone to the link Penance, which is a new link, which has been put up today. And if you don't see it, please refresh your page. Penance is nine down from the index and I'm reading the second paragraph under the heading the primary law that governs all court cases okay and yes the court ha the, the, the court has started so what we just read in the definition by the Catholic Encyclopedia of the Sacrament of Penance is the precise administrative procedure of every single court case now, can I just do a quick check? Are people hearing me, please? Just do a quick check, because there was a question here where someone said they didn't hear the call. Uh, are people hearing the call? Can we just get a a quick re referral across there? Yes? Okay, great. Thank you. All right. Now, the sacrament of penance being the foundation of every court case has three parts to it, as they say here. The first is that there is the accusation, which is a self-accusation. Now, if I go back to the old process of confession, as I recall it, not that I've done it for a while, the phrase is, bless me, Father, for I have sinned. Usually the opening line of what I say when I go into a confessional. So I'm accusing myself of sinning. I'm not defining the sin yet. I'm just saying I have sinned. I'm making an accusation at this point. It has been two months, six months, or in my case, a couple of decades since my last confession. And these are my sins. So that's part one. And then I confess. Now when I confess, two things happen. I'm appointing the priest as the executor at that point. I'm pleading to the priest and I'm pointing the priest as the executor. I'm then 
performing part two, which is the auricular confession. Okay, I am now 